Welcome to Becoming Parents Podcast. I'm Jen Taylor, your host. I am mom of 18, and you can find me on momsrunningit.com. Remember, give a shout out to those who are brave enough to share their stories with us on how they have become parents. Let's dive right in. Welcome. Today, I have my daughter, Olivia, on again. How are you, Olivia? I'm good. How are you? Good. So I had, I had somebody reschedule. So we jumped on and there was uh, an episode we wanted to do about becoming a doula and a breastfeeding counselor. But then the last couple of days have been tough toddler days. So I thought when this opportunity came up, like, why don't we talk about how tough it is to parent toddlers or just parent in general? Although toddlers are what you're experiencing and we still don't know, but let's start with, I think we'll actually talk about both because part of your training is, is so talk first, talk about why you want to become a doula and a breastfeeding counselor, because that's because of your kids who then are stopping you from being able to finish your schooling is where I was going with that. Yeah. Um, I became a doula because of the experience I had giving birth with my son, which we've talked about in another episode. Mm -hmm. Um, but I felt bullied by the people who were supposed to be there to help me in the super vulnerable time. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that. So I decided that nobody should feel like that and became a doula, um, which I love doing. I love being able to help women have these powerful experiences with something that should be so empowering. Um, but then you're left, you know, after the cute baby stage, you get the toddler stage and that's not as fun as the baby stage, <laughs> especially the, the first baby, baby stage where yeah. it's like you and you've got one newborn and you're crushing it. Right. I mean, like the newborn stage isn't easy, but it's easier because like right. all they want is mom. Sometimes they want dad or someone else. Like sometimes they're content, but they want mom. Like my son wanted me. I was his source of comfort, his source of food, this familiar sound and smell and just person. So I knew we could sit and cuddle and take naps together. Um, and it was easy and nice. And I mean, waking up at night is never easy. But I think I mean, in the I moment, that. yeah, <laughs> I, I think, I think in the moment it seems hard because it's all you have to compare it to. So let's not minimize like being pregnant oh, yeah. and having a baby and adjusting to that. Cause that is the single biggest adjustment. I know people think, oh, I'm going to get married or I'm going to move in with somebody and how tough that is. And I think you have no idea like that is not really that's not tough. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not that it's necessarily easy in all situations, but comparatively speaking, bringing that first child home, because now you have generally two parents who have to like, you have to figure out how you want to do everything. Are they yeah. sleeping with you? Are you going to breastfeed? And if you're going to breastfeed, are you going to breastfeed on demand? Or are you going to sleep train? Are you, like all of the things, There's all of the things. And there's two of you making the decision, not just you. So you have to figure out how you feel about all the things, but so does you, did your husband, your husband had to figure out, and then you guys had to compromise and agree yeah. and kids don't, they come with their own personality and their own sleep schedule and their own. So, I mean, when you had one and you were at home, there were lots of times it felt hard. Oh yeah. I mean, adjusting to being a mom I mean for me it wasn't as hard as I was expecting there were aspects of it that were more difficult but because I'm an older one out of so many kids and I worked at the nanny for little babies um that adjustment of taking care of a baby wasn't hard the part that was hard was the never ending yeah. As a sibling watching my younger siblings or as a nanny, I got to give kids back. <laughs> I should be like, hi, I am done. 
have a good day. But when it was my own, it's like the break is never coming. I'm not handing the kid back to their parents. I am the parent. And that for me was the hardest adjustment. I think being a nanny is great experience just in the like what you do and how you do, but you're also not making decisions about this child or children. Right. I'm like none. That. Yeah. Like they're paying you to do it a certain way and you do it the way they want. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to even agree with how that parent is doing things when you're a nanny. Um, you're just listening and doing it their way. So there's no decisions to be made either. Yeah. So and there's also stipulations sometimes like they don't want you to drive their kids in a car, for example, or like you don't have the same responsibilities or freedoms as a parent. We're now like, you need to go to the store to get groceries and you have two kids, you know, or whatever. So I just think that we don't expect it to be as hard as it is from like, I remember your, your cousin Molly saying like, why doesn't anybody tell you how much your body changes after you have a baby for the first time? Well, like, okay, if I told you one, would you believe me or would you care? And right. Like you're not in it. And pregnancy has a bazillion side effects. I don't know which ones you're going to get. Right. I was, we were at play group today and there were a couple of moms talking about the split in their abs. And I didn't get that. Right. So right. somebody was telling me about that and how awful it was to recover from, I mean, I can't relate to that conversation. Right. Or it doesn't relate to me when, you know, I have kids. So there's so many different things. And then as a doula, one of the things I do in the last um, meeting I have is talk about all of the postpartum options. Sleep safe sleep and like the different sleep options and different things like that breastfeeding versus formula feeding different types of bottles if they're going to do that whether it's with formula or pumped milk like there's so many options and one thing I let them know is no matter what they do somebody doesn't like it oh my gosh like let's talk about that for whatever that it is that they've decided so they need to make a decision as the parents of what's right for them and for their baby. And I stress that so much. I'm like, cause you can decide right out of the gate. Like we're doing bottles, we're doing formula. I had a bad experience before or everybody I know has bad experiences. So why would I be any different? And you want to do that? Well, here are your options. Make a decision for you. If you want to try something else, there are resources and stuff. So I tell them all of their options and then stress that it's for them. And it's the same with giving, like going through pregnancy and delivery and everything. Like I can give you all of the information, all of the education so you can make an informed decision because parenting is so individual. I have two kids and they are not the same kid. They are very, very different individual people that I have to cater to. So each person, each pregnancy, each delivery, each postpartum experience is so unique. You have to think, oh, what is good for my family? But that's so hard to do, especially with social media. You see all of the other moms doing all of these other things and you feel like you're failing in some aspect. Well, and everybody's critical. I mean, this is the thing. You can do all this research and all this studying and really soul search and try to figure out exactly like how you want to do things and feel so good about it. And then somebody's going to let you know that you're making the wrong choice. And you're harming baby. Right. Like, how could you? How could you breastfeed on demand? How could you bottle feed? I mean, it, it basically, it feels like an expanded version of junior high school. You're too tall. You're too short. Your boobs are too big. They're too small. You're too fat. You're too skinny. Like it doesn't matter how you show up. There are going to be people to, to criticize you and make you question your decision. And, you know, when you become a mom, when you become a parent and you want to like do the best job you possibly can, 
and you're constantly questions, questioning your own decisions internally, having that external pressure just makes it feel like you're right. I, it's kind of like the, the boards that show Pinterest, you know, you go on a Pinterest board about what, what this cake is supposed to look like the wedding cookies. I love wedding cookies and I wanted to make them. And th- it was such a massive fail. Like they did not look or taste anything like they were supposed to. And, um, I went to a party and one of my really good friends, I'm like, who made the wedding cookies? And she said, I did. And I showed her my picture. She goes, Oh honey, never make those again. Like call me, I'll make you a batch. But, it, but that's what it's like. It feels like a constant Pinterest fail where yeah. everybody else's life and parenting looks like this beautiful cake and yours is like melting on your counter. Yeah. And it's, it's really, really hard to navigate that. So you're right. You need to figure out what works for you. And then I like conversations where we do things differently, but there's not judgment in it. It's just like, yeah. and you can kind of get their experience and feedback without it negatively affecting your mm-hmm. experience and feedback. Yeah. No, I love when you can have those types of conversations whether it's between me and you or like me and other moms at like play group or, you know, out and about or whatever friends and stuff like that, like hearing what they're doing and then what I'm doing. And sometimes like they do something. And I'm like, actually that might work better than what I'm trying because it's not working. And I hadn't thought about that and vice right. versa instead of being like, Oh, well, why would you do it that way? <laughs> like, <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. And sometimes like I'm talking to like some of my friends and they're like, oh yeah, like this is one of my friends who I got to be her doula for. Um, her husband sleeps in one room with their oldest and she sleeps in another room with their youngest and they bed share. I'm like, oh, how does that work? She's like, it works great. My oldest sleeps better. My youngest can go on the boob whenever she wants and she sleeps great. Like it's a great experience. I'm like, you know, I like the idea of bed sharing. I can't do it. I do not sleep. And my second who wanted like more contact sleeping is the noisiest sleeper I have ever met. And like, I cannot do it. Sharing a room with her is awful. I'm like, it's great that you figured out something that works for you. Another friend who I was also a doula for, they all bed share in the same bed. And she wasn't planning on doing that. She was going to do like a separate bed in the room. And they ended up bed sharing and she loves it. And I'm like, that's awesome. Right. Like, that's great. You figured out things that work for you. And it's different from what works for me. It's like with both of my kids. Right. And it, it can be like, yeah, it worked great for the first one, but my second one was so noisy. I wasn't getting any sleep. I mean, like yeah. you can, you, and I don't think that there should be a parenting manual at all because every parent is different. Every kid is different. And I know we, with yeah. you guys growing up, it's like, I don't think you punish that child hard enough because I'm not giving the same consequence that I would give to you. Well, I give you the consequence that hurts you the most. So I wouldn't give the same consequence to your sibling because that's not something that it wouldn't be a big deal to them. So right. even though you're parenting your kids the same as in kind of the general rules are the same, your boundaries are the same, what's okay and not okay is the same. You handle it so differently from one child to the other. It looks like you're parenting them differently. I just, I mean, honestly, when I discipline, I wanted to hit it where it hurt the most. That's, if I'm going to give you a consequence and you love reading books, I'm taking books away for an hour, but I'm not going to do that with your sister because she doesn't care about books. Right. So it's, there's no ever one right answer, but there are lots of great suggestions. I want to go back to, so you had your son and you start, you decided to become a doula and a breastfeeding counselor. Yes. And the name of your business and why? because this is a big part of who you are and why you are who you are. So my business is forget me, not doula services. And it has a couple meanings behind it. One, forget me, not are my favorite flower. Um, they're the state flower of Alaska where I was born and raised and holds a special place in my heart. I've actually been feeling homesick for it lately. So I don't know what's going on. 
Um, but it's also, I won't forget you kind of, kind of thing. So it's one, it has a special meaning for me, but also it's in hiring me to work with you. You won't be forgotten. You won't fall through the cracks. You're going to feel seen and heard and like you matter in this incredible life-changing event that is becoming a mom. Um, so I loved that. I love that yeah. because you felt not seen, not heard and, and you feel like an afterthought. And I think that's yeah. a big part of where the forgotten part is, mm -hmm. or like, you don't want people to forget because as a mom, you're kind of as a mom in a hospital situation, sometimes you feel like they're not seeing you. They're yeah. just seeing the labor and the end result and wanting to fit it in a schedule. And um, I felt, I, I think a lot of people feel like they're an inconvenience. Oh, absolutely. With, with my son, we decided to break my water and we broke it around seven in the morning. And not even four hours later, they were like, you got to get the baby out. Like you have one more hour. And then like, you're looking at a C-section. And I knew I had time. Right. My baby wasn't in distress. I wasn't in distress. Everybody's blood pressure, everything was fine. I just became an inconvenience or I felt like I became an inconvenience. And that was really hard. And then they like are pushing you to do things their way because what you're doing isn't working. It isn't right. Well, your it's not fast enough. Progress. Right. It's not you fast enough. Not. Right. Um, and that's so hard. Like you just feel like you don't matter. And then you have the baby and it's no, like nobody cares about the mom anymore. You're just a vessel for everybody else. Everybody comes and they're checking on the baby. They don't come and check on mom. You know, that's like you're pregnant and everybody fawns over you and it's amazing. And then you have a baby. And even in the hospital, people are like, oh, how's the baby? Is the baby swaddled? Let me massage your abdomen. Like you don't have a gaping wound in it. Like <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Right. And you feel like so tossed around and everybody's like, oh, I want to see the baby. Let me check the baby. Let me be gentle with the baby. Oh, how are you? Oh, you wanted water? <laughs> yeah, we can get that for you in an hour. Right. You can walk down and get it yourself. And you're like, can we, can we not? <laughs> like, it's so, it's so hard becoming a mom because you, I, you do get forgotten so often. I think that that happens the same way with older kids. Like, you know, like your son, your son's born first, right? And everybody, no one could wait. We couldn't wait till this baby's here, right? He's still yeah. the same kid. Now he's a year uh, and a half yeah. old. Your second one's born. When I remember just thinking, if you want to help me make my older kids feel special, yeah. If you want to help me take them to the park, like this newborn baby is going to sleep and poop and eat. There's nothing that this newborn baby is going to do. Cry sometimes like, like in, in the big scheme of things, the newborn phase is the absolute easiest, which is great. Cause it gives you a chance to like take a breath and heal. And yeah. that's why I always got presents for the older kids. And I never got anything for the baby. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, even when you try to put so much focus on your older kids and you ask for things for yourself, which as women, like if we ask, it's painful to do it. Like we, well, it's like, we, it, we ask and we're like, if you can, yeah, you, don't worry about it. Like, it's and, I, and I can get it. Right. Yeah. Like people are like, oh, can we bring you a meal? Like, oh yeah. Like if you want, if you really like, if you have time, like, I don't want to inconvenience, inconvenience you. you. <laughs> like we'll be fine. <laughs> like, well, and you know what? You will, you will be fine. You will be fine. And you don't want to inconvenience a person, but when somebody offers, 
I mean, it's a hard place to get to that when somebody offers you anything, even outside of parenting, mm -hmm. it's like, and, and someone told me this because I never wanted any help because I could do it all by myself. And you know, I could, but the person said, by not allowing me to help, you're just robbing me of blessings. It's kind of selfish. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like I'm being selfish, not saying yes. And she was like, yes, it was Kelly. Yes. If you don't let me help you, I, I get like, we all want to be the helper, right? I want to be the one bringing the meal. I want to come in on my white horse, like the night, like Ooh, save the day. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, that's a great feeling. But when you tell people, no, you're robbing them of being able to do that. You're robbing them of the blessing of serving basically, and right. of feeling good and of contributing in a way that makes your life easier. And I'm like, you're right. That, that is selfish. It is selfish for me not to say, yes, please help me. Yeah. Well, that's hard though. Me, it was one thing when somebody offered, mm. if they were like, Hey, I am going to bring you a meal. What day works best? I'm like tonight, tomorrow, like literally you can bring me food. If you were just going to like come and bring food. But if somebody's like, Hey, let me know if you need help. I'm like, I do need help, but I'm not going to tell you I need help. Right. Like there's a difference for me in being like, Hey, I need help you offered and you just being like, Hey, I'm going to take your oldest. Right. Or I'm going to bring you this meal yep. or I'm going to come help you clean up. Cause I know that that helped me when I had a baby, like that kind of thing where it's like, you know, if there's like, Hey, I'm going to come do this. Is this day and time. Okay. Or does another day or time work better for you? Right. I'm more likely to accept that than somebody being like, let me know if you need anything. Right. That kind of feels like they've checked the box in doing Offer. the good deed in offering, yeah. but didn't have to really follow through. And like, yeah. look, if we're all moms talking, so you became a doula and part of that was postpartum mm -hmm. and postpartum. Here's the thing about us as human beings is um, like, I'm going to help you with things that I felt like I needed help with when it was me experiencing it, right? Mm -hmm. We take our own situation, right. like, oh my gosh, I really needed meals or, oh my gosh, I really needed somebody to clean my house. L like whatever I struggled with when I had kids, when you have someone else having a child, you want to do those things. And that doesn't necessarily mean that your struggle is the same as mine. However, there are some commonalities in that. So what, what was the, what did you need more help in and what was the best help or the best thing? And how do you translate that to postpartum help with your mamas? So what helped the most was with my first, when I had my son, I had so much neck and head pain from how I mm, was told. That's the right. um, so for like that first week, I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. even if I wanted to, I could barely like sit up to feed myself kind of thing. So the focus when we came home from the hospital and the first thing you did was what do you need? Oh, you're, okay. You have a new grandbaby that you could totally go fawn over, but you focused on me. Oh, okay. You asked how I was, what I needed and then did things for me. And when you felt like I was okay, and I felt like I was okay for a little bit, then we were like, Hey, you have, you have a grandson. Do you want to meet him? <laughs> um, and so one thing that I really, really focus on is I don't ask about the baby first. Yeah. I don't either. I never ask about the baby. And first. that's why, yeah. right? Because that was what I needed was I needed the attention. I like expected you to go straight to my son because, oh, it's a new baby, but you went straight to me. You're like, you're my baby. Yeah, I did say that and actually. My baby needs help. Right. Like this one's fine. This one's got his dad. Like they're fine. You need me. And so that is how I translate it to anybody I meet who just had a baby. I'm like, how are you doing right I feel like moms get so overlooked in the oh there's a new baby kind of hubbub 
So that is the first thing I do. Yep. Is I make sure the mom is okay. In my experience with my first delivery and, you know, Brie was in uh, NICU Mm -hmm. and I was a train wreck emotionally, but you don't even recognize that you're a train wreck emotionally. Like you, it's, you're a new mom going through all these things. And I couldn't figure out how to use the double breast pump in the pump room to pump for her in the NICU and the lactation consultant. I mean, I was really, really blessed with a great experience this because my mom was there and my sister was there and it wasn't helpful. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm glad they were there, but it wasn't helpful. Right. And she, I, um, I asked, I was like, I don't, I'm not, I don't know how to use this. Can somebody help me? And she was sent in and she sat in the room and she's like, okay, this gets plugged in here. And this, you know, the mechanics, this gets plugged in here. And I'm like, okay, I've got it. I understand that. And then you put it on and you turn the pump on and she could have left. She could Mm -hmm. have said, if you have any other questions, let me know if you need, she didn't, she sat down right across from me and she said, tell me about your birth story. And I lost my mind. I cried and told her for 20 minutes and nobody had asked me. Yeah. Like, they're like, how are you doing? Like, is your vagina? Okay. Do your boobs look engorged. You know, like nobody asked me really how I was or in a way that I could that I felt comfortable. Like, how are you? Like, oh, I'm okay. Like physically I'm okay. I'm upset about my beat. Like, but she said it differently. She yeah. said, how was your birth? And that made me realize from that moment, moving forward that one, it should always be about the mom and, and the dad when the dad's there. Yeah. And two, that asking people to share their story instead of asking, how are you is a better approach. Yeah. 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 Cause I feel like you know, people are like, sometimes there's like, oh, so how are you? How is the baby? And you're like, oh, good. Like, we're good. And like, that's the kind of it. It's a close-ended question. Right. Even though like, it could be an open-ended question. Yeah. It feels very closed. Well, because how many moms are going to say, I'm crappy. I'm doing awful. I feel like nothing went right. I failing as a mom. I can't, you know, thing with that too and this is something I've seen a lot on TikTok too where it's like you try and say something you try and be like man the newborn stage is really hard or teething is killing me or something there's like oh just wait oh just wait wait until they hit two wait until they start crawling or they start walking and they can get into everything it's like minimizing how you're feeling in that moment because oh something worse is coming up like it's gonna be hard and you're like but right now right is what's hard that'll be hard then but this is hard now Now. and I want to talk about it I want somebody to say oh I experienced that too right and I feel that too you're not alone in that and so I don't think as moms, we feel like we can really express what's going on because someone somewhere is going to be like, well, just you wait. That's true. And so- that like minimizes everything you're feeling in your moment. And then you feel more like a failure because you're like, oh, well, I think this is hard. Right. And it's, it's not. Or if I can't handle this and it's going to be worse, what am I going to do oh, then? I- Right. Like, how am I going to survive? And you just feel like you're drowning and right. nobody's there to help you. Well, and that's why I said, like, in, in hindsight, newborns are really easy, but in the moment, it's the most overwhelming thing you go through. It's like no mm-hmm. transition you've ever experienced. And it's really, really hard. Yeah. So then you add a second child. So let's talk about, let's just talk a little bit about, um, like, yeah, like I'm guessing Dawson was easier as a baby than he was as a toddler. I mean, yes and no, huh? Yes and no. Right. He was actually a fairly easy newborn. Teething actually wasn't a terrible experience with him. 
when he decided he needed to be mobile, that's when we started having some issues because he wanted to go forward, but he could only push himself back. And he yeah. became so irritated and was like, you have to carry me from point A to point B because I don't know what I'm doing. So when he finally figured out crawling and I'm like, this kid needs to crawl. And everybody's yeah. But as soon as he starts crawling, he can get into everything. I'm, like, I'm aware that as soon as he starts crawling, he can get up into everything. I have things that I don't want him to get into blocked off, baby locked. He can get into everything. He needs to go. Yeah. He was like a big he kid trapped in a little kid body. Yeah. He needed to go. So we were working with getting him to crawl because he needed that. And once he started crawling, he was like, this different kid and then he started walking and it was like a step up he's like I have everywhere mm -hmm. yeah with my reach and became a happier kid but there was that little bit where he couldn't go where he wanted to and it was so hard for us yeah and now you know he's almost two and a half and we're working on speech and words and that is its own that is its own thing it's its own challenge and at the same time you hit two and a half and everybody says terrible twos I think threes are harder but regardless I mean those toddler years where they they just want the cookie before breakfast they don't understand why they can't have it they just know that that's what they want you said no and they're angry like you know and temper tantrums like and all of the temper tantrums and there's that I want this now so I need it now and I can't communicate or something's bothering them and they can't communicate my son is like his dad and does not like when his shirt gets wet so he was drinking and his shirt got a little wet and he comes up and he's whining and we've hit this instead of just like whining and like, you know, like an older kid whine, we get to this like, like this really soft baby whine. I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I do not know what you want. Like we've taken a step back from this attempt. And he's like trying to take his shirt off and he's pointing to it. And there's like a little spot of water. I'm like, is your shirt wet? can like you want your shirt off yeah. can we take your shirt off how do we take your shirt off I'm like trying to work and like figure it out but man the whining the temper tantrums because they're not understanding and you're like yeah I'm understanding there's like this lapse and I'm trying to understand but you're whining and the way you're whining is annoying yeah like, what are, what are we doing? It, and I like, I remember, I think it was Taylor. I was, I remember he used to say Unkadi or Unkada, Unkada, Unkada. And I did not know what Unkada was. And he would get so frustrated with me. And I remember loading the dishwasher and he was standing like at the dishwasher. And all of a sudden I went, uncle joel and that's what it was and i mean the it, you know even when they're trying to communicate it's so frustrating and so you have all these temper tantrums some of which are totally ridiculous and others where they're really trying to tell you something like i don't like my shirt wet i yeah. want uncle joel i mean like whatever it is and the ones where they're trying to communicate are frustrating for both of us because we actually want to know and help right like, the temper tantrums are kind of like, well, now it's time to set up boundaries and you learn that you can't get something just because you want it. And it's, and it's a really, really hard phase. Yeah. I mean, whining because his shirt got wet and figuring out like, oh, this is what it is. And we just want to take the shirt off until it dries. Cause then it was dry and he brought it to me. He's like, all right, let's put my shirt back on. Well, then you have the really dumb temper tantrums, like you can't have fruit snacks at 5.30 in the morning, or <laughs> you asked for the Spider-Man shirt, and they put you in the Spider-Man shirt. 
<laughs> Which that might have happened this game. morning. <laughs> he, well, I was like, okay, do you want the Spider-Man shirt or the Captain America shirt? And he looked Spidey. And I was like, all right, let's get the Spidey shirt. And I put it on him and we throw a fit. Well, you did it wrong, obviously. <laughs> I did something wrong. I mean, and those are the times that you just have to walk away and keep going on your day. Like, oh, if you need to cry, you need to cry. I'm right here. I'm really sorry. There's not, I don't know how like to eat. There's them. nothing. Right. And it there's just sucks because <laughs> you don't want them to cry. And then there's the, I want fruit snacks at 530. And the answer is not right now. Yes. Later. Not right now. You can have one of these three things, but you can't have that. Mm -hmm. And the temper tantrums because they can't get what they want. Yeah. And then there's the lack of communication. And it's hard. It's, it's all hard. Something that helps is when there's the lack of communication is all ask him to show me mm -hmm. like you want something. Okay. I don't know what you want. Can you show me? Right. And then trying to piece together, like the word he's trying to say with what he's asking me for. Right. Which doesn't always happen. And sometimes I ask him to show me and he's like, that's not what I want to do. I want right. you to know what I'm saying. It's hard. It is hard. And we're in that stage with him and my daughter is getting her molars and right. she is an awful teether. <laughs> Teething is the worst thing with her. Where with my son, it was, he suddenly had teeth and he was like a little bit more drooly, but he wasn't like fussy about it where she is like. And not sleeping and not, not sleeping, right. Like not happy. Um, and that's hard. Right. And they're and happening. Of course they are. I mean, no, I, no matter, kind of, no matter what age difference your kids are, I mean, this isn't totally true, but regardless of the age differences, kids go through hard stuff. And sometimes kids go through hard stuff simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, it, it, no matter what the stage is, it's still kids are hard and you've, it's hard. Yeah. I feel like something else that's hard is when you do compare yourself to other people or you're talking to people and there's like, oh, well, I handle it this way and make it seem like you're doing it wrong or like there's a lot more about like gentle parenting kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, working with the kids through their emotions and letting them know like you know emotions are okay and this is the appropriate way to like express that you're angry like we're not gonna hit mom we're not gonna hit ourselves like we can be angry but we need to be angry nicely um and if you don't do that if you yell at your kid or you spank your kid or you put them in time out like you're a bad parent and it's like or it's just what's working for this kid in this stage or I'm trying, but I'm not perfect. Like yeah. I try to do more of like the gentle parenting and like working with my son through those emotions and like all of that. But sometimes I, as a mom, am having a hard time. Oh, and I've been working with him a lot and I'm getting irritated that like, we're just not catching on or there are those random days where you just are not in a good mood and you're trying to work with the kids and trying to do that. But then you're like, but can you just go away? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, you, but like, I don't want you today. One thing that I think I didn't realize for years and years and years, or I didn't know how to vocalize for a long time is that like, as a mom, I am creating the story of my life still. Like that doesn't stop at the same time. You're trying to create the story for your kids and you want to do such a good job and it's really hard. And mm -hmm. you know, if there's a quota of daily mistakes, you're all like, I'm not a quitter. I'm going to hit that quota of daily mistakes. And in that story of your life, like tons of things happen. You get sick. You don't feel well. You have a bad day. You wake up in a funk. You're angry about stuff. There's stressful things about your car or your job or your husband or your like but insert thing here. And it's really hard to continue on with the story of your own life while you're also trying to create a good story for your kids 
You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really hard. I think we put ourselves on the back burner and autopilot and then we lose ourselves. And I'm glad that I didn't. And I think you've, you're working really hard not to do that, to keep your own interests and to keep your own like life, your own story going yeah. while you're parenting them. Yeah. And you became I, a doula. So how was that having kids? Cause you did it. I did it with, I started right after my son turned one. Yep. And I was just getting into the second trimester with my daughter. So Perfect timing. Great timing. Um, I was pretty sure I was going to finish everything before she was born. I finished three classes. So, out yeah. of out of how many? Seven. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it was still I really good, it. though. <laughs> like, you've still worked really hard to continue your education and to get certified and to help other women while yeah. you're going through all of this. So, yeah, I mean, it was easier when it was just my son, because he was taking like a good nap. He went down a decent time and I could work on things around him where there was a few months where they were alternating naps. One would wake up and the other would be going down and so there wasn't time where like both kids were napping and I could go and I could sit down and I could do it. And then at the end of the day, you're just so mentally drained that you don't want to do anything. So there were definitely a couple months where it wasn't a priority, but I was trying. Yeah. No and kidding. knowing like this thing that I wanted to do that I was positive I could do in the year that I had I'm failing at like I'm not making that a priority and I should and I have time limits and you know I have so long I have until I have to finish everything and like figuring out that but like when it was just the one it was pretty easy to like be doing the things that I needed to do and then I had a baby <laughs> and you're not doing anything when you have a newborn. Right. Especially if you already have a child, like another kid, whether it's a toddler or an older kid, like you are trying to figure out that balance. Yeah. And then you're like juggling, you're throwing another thing in there and dropping everything every time you try. It does feel like that. And that's why like not losing yourself and keeping that going is not, it's not like, oh, just like, I love using the calendar and setting uh, things up and prioritizing. And when you have little kids, you can't completely do that. Like you can try to get three things done in a day, right? but you're not really using your calendar and you're not necessarily going to be able to get three days. I mean, three things done. Yeah. Um, it's being like kind and gentle to yourself and knowing that you are doing the number one, most important thing, which is taking care of the kids. Mm -hmm. And also you want to try to clean and take care of yourself at the same time. It's a, it's really hard. There's no one right answer. No, there really isn't. And each day is going to be different on what you can accomplish or how good you feel or, you know, how well you're juggling all of the things that you have to juggle. Um, yeah, like Friday was an awful day for me. I was, wasn't in a good mood. Nothing that I was doing was working for the kids. She was super grumpy all day because of her molars. He wanted to go do things and wrong times and wanted things that I couldn't give him, uh, cause we didn't have them or cause she was sleeping and he wanted to go outside and go do things. And like, everything was just garbage. And I hadn't been able to clean my house all week. Cause it was just like one thing after another. Yeah. And then yesterday was like an in-between day. The first half was kind of rough, but the second half was better. And today everybody woke up and everything was great. Yeah. It's like a totally different totally different thing and you're like I'm crushing it we got out of the house we went to the store we went to the park both kids are now 
the same time. The house is clean. You're a genius. Like you're doing a podcast that. impromptu. Like what? Who like, are you? Everything is working today. And it like half worked yesterday. Yeah. It didn't work at all on Friday. It's just every day is so different. And sometimes you get like a couple of good days in a row. And sometimes you have a week of bad days and you feel like you're failing on every day. I think it's important when you have the tough, when you have the good days to really high five yourself, like, okay, this is a great day and it's not going to go this way all the time. And then when the hard days come, you realize that you can give yourself some grace. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not every day is going to be those perfect days where things go right. And you know, if you need to ask for an extension on like you're, you are at the very, very, very end of your schooling, you're doing advanced lactation. So, I mean, like you have everything else pretty much done and all you can do is say, Hey, uh, with my life right now and things are happening, I need to take a little longer. What does that look like? Yeah. Because we're so hard on ourselves that we're failing and you're not, you're just going more slowly than you thought you were going to and realize that maybe the, how quickly you thought you were going to go is unrealistic. And I'm just using that as an example for other moms. I mean, like uh, whether it's school or a business or uh, exercise or insert thing here, right. Oh my gosh. Like that's a whole different thing. So Liv, tell people how they can find you because they want a really amazing doula. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Both are Forget Me Not Doula Services. I also have a website, forgetmenotdoulaservices.com. So you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and you can message me through there. Um. Or you can reach out through my website, which is also an option. Um, it sends me an email. So there's a few ways you can get a hold of me. And Olivia will keep it real. Yeah. Th- thanks for talking about tough, the toughness of parenting little kids and trying to not lose your mind. I mean, we're trying not to lose our mind. We're not. I didn't say you were going to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or that it's even a bad thing to lose your mind. Maybe that is what we need to do. Sometimes I think so. Also, something that helps secret stashes of your favorite snack and treat. Yeah, I secret stashes. No, yeah, I did too. Yeah, 100%. Like lots in the office. Some in the kitchen, which is baby gated, some in the bedroom. And I'm thinking I need to put some in the bathroom too. Oh, it's a because when you finally go in there and sit down and relax. Right. And like they're I'm, banging on the door and you see fingers underneath the door sneaking. Like old, yeah. Old yeah. Baby. <laughs> yes. Or like I, you're doing the laundry or switching the laundry over. Yeah. It's important to support yourself in your so laundry. I'm thinking I need to add a little bit there. 